How do you know you are a good Christian? I mean, how do you know you're really mature and you follow Jesus well? I once had a young guy coming to ask me this exact question after a church service, and my answer that I gave him left him amazed. Well, guys, so we're in a series called Love, where we're basically discovering what is the essence of Christianity. What's the one thing that makes Christianity Christianity? I mean, if you would remove this thing from what Jesus started, you would be left with absolutely nothing. It's almost like a dead straw man version of Christianity versus a real man picture of it. I want you to imagine a car, for instance. Um, you can take so many things away from a car. You can remove the windows. You can remove some of the um, mirrors in the car. You can even remove some of the seats in the car. But the moment you remove the wheels, it just becomes a chunk of metal right there in the middle of the road. And the reason for this is it is you have removed the essence of the car. And that's actually the question that I'd like to address a little bit today. It's a question that a young man also came to ask Jesus. He was an expert in the law, and he wanted to know what's the one big thing that he needed to do to inherit the eternal kingdom of God. What do I need to do to get the eternal life, the God life? When do I know I'm living like a good Christian should? Jesus, as clever as he always is, didn't give him an answer, but he asked another question. And he asked this man, well, what does the law say? You're an expert at the law, so what does the law of Moses say? He answers correctly by saying you should love God and you should love your neighbor. Jesus commends him and he says, go and do this. And then we see the heart of this young man, this law expert. Luke tells us in Luke chapter 10 that this expert wanted to justify himself. So he asks Jesus, where is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? How far do I need to go? What's the line? What's the amount of laws that I need to commit to, that I need to obey in order to know that I am loving my neighbor well? Well, to this we know Jesus actually replied with a very familiar story. The story of the good Samaritan. We all know the story well. It's a story about a young man on his way to Jericho and there a robber finds him next to the road and they leave him right there, beat him, take all of his stuff and he's helplessly next to the road there. And then Jesus tells the story as follow when he says a priest come by, one of the guys that really should know the law well and he's the, like a good, good picture of a Christian in this story. And yet he misses the essence of what it means to follow Jesus in that moment. And he just walks by. And then a Levite comes. That's basically like the super worship leader in a church. He's very active and uh, he would know all the things about what it means to follow Jesus. And he also makes the same move. Both of them probably very afraid to risk their life because you never know whether it's a trick and there might be some other robbers on the other side trying to catch them. And I mean, I'm really busy and I'm in a hurry and I actually need to get to my next destination, you know, like before night falls and it's really dangerous. So none of them are willing to risk it. And then Jesus leaves this young man awestruck when he brings in a character that he could have never expected, a good Samaritan. Now, to understand the Samaritan's view in a Jewish world, you need to know that, I mean, there's like this list of people and you would get like the, the priests, the Levites, the, the devout followers, uh, the men, the women, the children, the mothers-in-laws, the tax collectors, and then you get the Samaritans. These are the guys <laughs> that the Jewish people despised. And Jesus brings them into the story. And this guy takes responsibility, he risks it, he stops, he helps this man next to the road, and he even continues paying a greater price, helping him, paying the price, booking him in to a, in a hotel in those days, and, and paying in advance and saying that when I come back and there's any other expenses, I will also pay for that. It will not be at any cost to you. I will give everything. And then, he leaves this young expert of the law who's so concerned with doing everything right 
and thinking that's what defines good Christianity. And he asks him this question, which one of these three do you think loved their neighbor? The young man replied, saying, it was clearly the good Samaritan. In this moment, guys, Jesus is saying that a good Christian, a mature Christian, is not measured in how well we keep laws, how concerned we are with the laws, how well we even know the Bible and read it or pray. It's measured in the capacity that we have to love. Like that Samaritan loved, by giving up everything. And Jesus went even further, not just his stuff and his resources, he gave up his life in showing love. Today I want to leave you with the last words Jesus spoke to this young expert in the law. And he said the following, he says, you have answered well. Now, it's verse 37, you go and do likewise. May you, as we journey through this love series, find the capacity through the power of God's Spirit to walk out into this world that's so broken and go and do likewise. God bless. Hey guys, so if this was helpful to you in any way, I would love to encourage you. It will be great if you can hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to make sure that you don't miss out when the next piece of great content comes your way.